Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include CBI says staying in EU is overwhelmingly best for business. European Union blocks execution of convicted murderer in Missouri. And cancer costs across the European Union are $170 billion annually. European elections 2014, shining bright under a dark sky. Plus, a European Union without Britain is the last thing America needs. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, staying in the European Union is worth between 4 to 5 percent of annual output and overwhelmingly best for business. But reforms are needed, the CBI says. Ahead of its national conference, the business group said research found EU membership is worth 62 to 78 billion to the UK. And it calls for barriers to e-commerce to be removed by the EU and for it to become more outward looking and for a refocus in the work of EU commissioners. It also wants to see a permanent opt out from the working time directive. The CBI report compiled after questioning its members also said businesses wanted a moratorium on legislation which could be made at a national level. Well, frankly, I'm shocked by the position of the CBI, and I do wonder which business people they're asking in relation to this. I am a businessman and have run many businesses over the last 15 years, and I have seen a tsunami of red tape, legislation, inundate businesses. In fact, only last month we got a letter from a national eco-friendly products producer that has had its business almost crippled due to the EU simply changing legislation. The governor of Missouri announced Friday he would postpone the execution of convicted murderer Alan Nicholson, who was originally scheduled to die on October the 23rd. Governor Jay Nixon made the decision after the European Union threatened to cut off shipments of propofol, a common surgical anaesthetic, if the execution moved forward. It was to be the first time that a lethal dosage of propofol was used in an execution. If shipments of propofol are blocked, it would impact hospitals in Missouri. As the Blaze previously reported, the EU threat extended to other death penalty states regarding European Union-made drugs used for lethal injections. Cancer costs the 27 countries of the European Union some 126 billion euros in 2009, according to a study published on Monday. The bill mainly comprised 51 billion euros in costs for health care systems, including drugs, 23 billion euros in unpaid care provided by friends and relatives of people with cancer, and 52 billion euros in lost productivity due to premature deaths and illnesses. Britain, France, Germany and Italy accounted for more than two-thirds of the costs. Whilst the treatment and support for cancer patients has increased dramatically, so have the incidence of the disease. It would be really interesting to look at some studies of cancer rates in European populations over the last century, as it looks like a disease that is on the increase. The question is why? Now, if you have any research, links or insights into this field, then please do let us know. Life in the European Union appears better than in many other parts of the world, yet this well-being is undermined by the Euro crisis, combined with a loss of confidence by citizens in their institutions. This trend will be one of the major issues in the upcoming EU ballot. It is very interesting to look at photos of Europe taken at night via satellite. White, shiny splotches clearly indicate the most developed areas, the Benelux countries, the Paris area, the Ruhr region and the Rhine Valley. The Po River Plain sparkles too, as do Rome, its suburbs and the Gulf of Naples. Now, this is a good in-depth article in the run-up to the 2014 elections and well worth your time taking a read. (music) 
Compared to the House of Commons vote on Syria, a British referendum vote to quit the European Union would have far more significant implications for the future of transatlantic relations. The House of Commons' decision not to support US military action against Syria, along with the opinion polls pointing toward growing public support to quit the EU, has prompted warnings the UK risks isolating itself from both the USA and the EU. But focusing on the implications for UK, US and UK, EU relations distracts from the larger relationship Britain's isolation would affect, the US European relationship. The USA would be left facing an EU changed by the disappearance of one of its largest economically liberal and outward looking members. Europe's divisions could be deepened, the EU and NATO weakened, and wider transatlantic relations complicated. Alternatively, the USA could find itself facing a more united EU, with the UK adrift between the two. Well, today in our video library, as per the last story, once again the United States is espousing how it values a strong United Kingdom in a strong European Union. And do the public realise, however, what they are giving away? Well, I think not. On Friday last, I was asked to appear as a guest presenter at the Exeter University Debating Society, a questions time style event. Now, the audience sat wide-mouthed when I explained that the sell-off of their energy companies, banks, gold, post offices and railways were all directly attributable to the European Union. When I explained that EU law is supreme over British law and that the Lisbon Treaty effectively assigns sovereignty to the European Union, making it a legal personality that can operate just like a nation-state, <laughs> they sat in disbelief. But when I explained that the government had known this to be the case all along, and that Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048 was documented evidence that proves beyond all reasonable doubt that this was the case, well, then they started to get angry. The reality, folks, is that people in Britain rarely move to do anything about a situation until they're angry, and now is that time. Successive governments have conspired to guide the nation of Britain into a federal United States of Europe, and each step they have carefully disguised as having an economic purpose, all executed just as French EU architect Jean Monnet said it should be in 1954. These governments and ministers have lied to all of us. They have deceived all of us, and they have given away our democratic rights our sovereignty and the freedom to govern ourselves. The question now is, what are you, yes, you, going to do about it? One thing you can do right now is share our documentary film, Betrayed. Share it with as many people as you can. Simply send them a link or share it on Facebook, Twitter or Google Plus with a simple message. Watch this, you will not believe this, but it's true. I'm Rick Timmis. Reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>